Hello and welcome to another film about the effect of temperature on equilibrium. Um, you've hopefully seen the one where we've uh, introduced some practical experiments and hopefully you've also looked at the principles behind this. This film looks at the graphs that we might see. So what happens to the rates of the forward and backward reactions when temperature changes occur and how these changes might affect our concentrations. Okay, let's start off by looking at the effect of temperature on rate and that is a collision theory explanation that we need to employ. So once again, let's look at one of these energy distribution diagrams to try and help us explain this. Okay, this shows as before that as the temperature of a sample increases, the proportion of particles with greater than a certain amount of energy, so let's say this is the amount of energy we need to react, the activation energy, the proportion of particles exceeding that activation energy increases as the temperature increases and so a greater proportion of collisions will lead to reactions. So the collision theory tells us, according to what we've just been saying, that the rate of all reactions will increase as the temperature increases and the rate of all chemical reactions will decrease when temperature decreases. Okay, there, um, This might sound a little bit repetitive and we have talked about it in the last film but it really is worth stressing this point because some people kind of get caught up when, when they start thinking that one reaction is favoured over another they think that one reaction must be slowing down whilst the other one's speeding up okay it's worth bearing in mind that an increase in temperature will call, cause all reactions forward or back to speed up and a decrease will always cause them to slow down so that is worth considering as we move on and look at some of the graphs okay um, we are going to look at a simple uh, reaction here to start with where A oops uh, let's just start that again where A turns into B in the forward process and B turns back into A in the reverse process okay and we're going to represent these two um, reactions the forward and the back one with the different colored lines and they're supposed to be equal rate at the moment because the system is at equilibrium We've increased the temperature, and this is talking about an endothermic process. So remember, in, by convention, if we're saying that the process is endothermic, we're talking about the forward process, so that one must be exothermic. If we've increased the temperature, Le Chatelier says the system wants to decrease it, so it's going to favour the endothermic reaction. So the endothermic reaction is going to have to be going faster than the exothermic one. So what we're going to do here is we're going to get them to both go up because the temperatures increase, so all reactions speed up, but the endothermic reaction is going to go up more than the exothermic reaction. Okay, and then they're going to come back to equilibrium in the usual way that we've seen lots of times now. One falls, one rises. Okay, looking at the concentrations of these two substances, okay, let's just mark them at arbitrary heights. Okay, A and B, or reactants and products. Okay, this system, when the change took place, no change to the concentrations occurred. Okay, but once this system started moving towards a new equilibrium, the endothermic reaction, in this case the forward one, was going faster, so our concentration of product is going to start increasing. Okay, I'm just having it going up by five squares here. Why is that important? Well, because we've got a one-to-one -one ratio, so the green one must fall by the same amount that the other one rose. Okay, so again, flattening off when we reach the new equilibrium, because concentrations have to be constant at equilibrium. Why has blue gone up and green gone down? Well, because we increased the temperature of the system, tried to lower it, so it moves to the right, because the forward reaction is endothermic. So that's the Le Chatelier explanation. Okay, the collision theory tells us why they both went up. Okay, um, what's changed? That might look like the same slide, but we're now looking at an exothermic process. So uh, maybe A turning, uh, let's, sorry, let's change the colors there. A turning into B, and B turning back into A. This is an exothermic process, so we are saying that the forward reaction is exo and the reverse reaction is endo. If we increase the temperature, then these two reactions, which are going at the same rate as one another, 
will both speed up because we've increased the temperature, so a great proportion of particles have enough energy to react and blah, blah, blah. But the system's trying to lower the temperature, so the endothermic reaction will be favoured, so that will speed up by more than the exothermic reaction will. Okay, and then they'll come back together in the usual way. You must be getting used to that by now. Okay, and we're at equilibrium when they're equal again. Okay, and they'd actually, I mean, there's something I've been doing is just stopping them there, but they'd actually carry on at that level until some other change disrupted the equilibrium system. Concentration time graphs, okay, again, I'm just going to mark these at arbitrary heights. Okay, some change happens. We've increased the temperature, exothermic process, so it's favouring the backward reaction, so the amount of uh, reactants is going to increase. This time I'm just changing it by a different amount just to show it can be um, various here. Okay, and this was what, about five squares? Nine squares change, so that one's going to change by the same amount because we've got a one to one mole ratio here. Okay, and we're back at equilibrium when these two concentrations are constant. Okay, moving on. Again, not a very big change, but an important change. We're now decreasing the temperature and we're back to an endothermic process. Let's just make it slightly more complicated. Let's have it A going to 2B this time and 2B turning back into A in the backward process. Endothermic this time, so endo, exo. Decrease the temperature, so all reactions slow down. Okay, They start off going at the same rate because they're at equilibrium. All of them slow down. Which one slows down more? Well, the system's trying to increase the temperature according to Le Chatelier's principle, so the exothermic reaction has to be favoured. So in other words, it has to end up going faster than the endothermic one. So the endothermic one will slow down more than the exothermic one. Okay? And then they'll come back to equilibrium in the usual way. Okay? So once again, system's trying to increase the temperature, so it's favouring the backward process in this case. Concentrations of reactants and products, okay, we are favouring the backward reaction here. So the concentration of A is going to increase um, by, let's say, two squares until it levels off. But concentration of B is going to change by twice as much because we've got two moles of B to every mole of A here. So that one's going to go down by four squares. That's a little bit of a sketchy diagram I've drawn there. Okay, they should be changing by, you know, in, over the same course of time and ending up flat. Okay, and I think finally we're decreasing the temperature, but this time of an exothermic process. Uh, I don't know, let's go for 2A turning into 3B this time. Okay, and 3B turning back into 2A in the reverse direction. This is a lowering of temperature, so all rates fall. Okay, so both these lines, which are at equilibrium and therefore the same rate, they're going to fall. Which one's going to fall more? Well, we've now got an exothermic process, so that's the forward one, endo in the backward direction, decreasing the temperature. So according to Le Chatelier's principle, the system wants to raise it, so it has to favour the forward reaction. So they're both going to drop here, um, but the backward one is going to drop more than the forward one. Okay, and then they're going to return to equilibrium in the usual way. So there we are. And the, oops, um, the reactions here are supposed to be going at the same rate because we're back at equilibrium. Okay, arbitrary heights for my reactants and products. Okay, we're favouring the exothermic change because we've lowered the temperature. So that means more B is going to form. So let's put that up by, let's say, uh, let's make it something easy for myself this time, six squares. Okay, now the concentration of A changes by two-thirds as much as the concentration of B, so it's going to fall, but it's going to fall by three squares because of that mole ratio. And then they're going to be back at flat lines when we're back at equilibrium. Okay, so that is all there is to say about the concentration time graphs and the rate time graphs for temperature changes. Um, hopefully you've now watched the ones about concentration and t pressure and temperature and you've also looked at adding and removing reactants so all you've probably got left to do is catalysts and noble gases.